Salutations, ladies and gentlemen, the Knife Raven here, back again with another video. And in today's video, well, as you have probably noticed by the title, this is not another new Michael May knife, which may be begrudging to some, as I can understand that those would be a bit more exciting than the run of the mill uh, video. But today, I figured instead of going straight to the the goodies, I should talk about something else that, well, I figured might be interesting to some, and it is the very quick and slightly unnerving acceleration of my Etric addiction. Now, it has been well documented on this channel that ever since I got this knife, which is quite oily, wipe it off quickly, that ever since I got this knife, I have been consistently liking this style, the Etric, as it is known, more and more, and have even gone as far as to buy more of them, starting with this Rosewood model, which is very, very nice. I actually recommended this as a um, top budget buy, as this was a very inexpensive knife with very nice quality, so I recommended this, and, well, that was my second Etric. And from there, I got two more, and they were special factory orders. One was kind of mediocre. It's this one. And the other one was quite exemplary. That would be this one. And they are both featuring bog oak handles. Now, these four knives right here are Etric models, which would be the Swayback shape, a very, very exaggerated swayback. And the swayback is a term you've probably heard if you've been in the world of traditional knives for more than 10 seconds. And what it is, is it's a handle that starts thinner at the, the front, which would be the bolster side, and becomes thicker at the back, which would be the end. And during this process, unlike a teardrop, which is the traditional Barlow shape, a swayback actually curves up. Here is a less uh, noticeable swayback. This is the Michael May I just recently talked about. And you can see that the handle, not only does it get thicker by the back, but it also curves up just a little bit. And that is what we now know as a swayback. Where the term came from, I do not know. Perhaps it's just that someone took a look at their knife and noticed, hmm, that knife sways to the back. Perhaps I shall call it a swayback. And from there, I suppose, the pattern came to be. Now, the blade shape on these, you may notice, is a Warrencliffe. And the Warrencliffe was supposedly designed by the Lord, um, Lord Warrencliffe, or the Earl of Warrencliffe. And he lived in the 19th century. And this blade shape was apparently designed by he and his gamekeeper. And whether or not the gamekeeper did all the work and he just took the name, we do not know. But it was designed to be used for gutting very small game, such as rabbits, squirrels, uh, and, and such. Now, the blade was made by Joseph Rogers, which is a very famous knife company that has been around for over 300 years. Cutlers to His Majesty, they were known as. And... Well, they were the ones who took the commission from Lord Warncliffe, and they made this, and it took off, became popular, and they've been making Warncliffe blades in Sheffield ever since. Other parts of the world have adopted it, and it has been used in cutlery from the USA, from Germany, from France, and it's even been adapted into kitchen use, survival use, and even self-defense. So the Warncliffe as a whole has come a long way from being just a small practical knife for small game hunting to something that has become, well, quite, quite important in the blade community as a whole. And, well, I figured that the Etric, at very least, is arguably the most original form of a Warren Cliff, as it was meant to be a small pocket knife. Again, you could carry with you almost anywhere, but still, it was trademarked by the slightly shorter, slender blade with a straight edge 
a swoop that leads down to a very sharp tip, and it's also very much a knife that is very good for draw cuts and being held in this backhand position. Now, that's a little bit of a brief history that I've probably talked about before, but I suppose since this is a collection update, I will mention it again. We're already five minutes into the video and I haven't even shown you the knife, which is typical for me, as I'm very good at wasting time. But without further ado, this latest addition to my ever-growing Etric collection is this model. This is the Arthur Wright & Son Etric in buffalo horn. Now, buffalo horn is a very interesting material. As you would guess, it is the horn of a buffalo. Quite surprising, I know. And I only have two other examples of buffalo horn here. They are all from Sheffield, and the first one right here is a Taylor's Eyewitness Barlow Premier Collection made by Adam Smith. This is a very nice piece. It has some detailing in it, but it's just more focused on the slightly almost translucent on the first layer, but mostly just iridescent um, inky black which is a very, very pretty color on this. Blends very well with the steel. And while it isn't the most detailed buffalo horn in the world, there are some markings in the grain. But, again, that's kind of what you can expect from most buffalo. Has a very nice clip point blade. Yeah, there are some grayish white streaks in here, but those aren't terribly common. Second piece, which is probably the most underwhelming one I have, is also a Taylor's Eyewitness. This is a Premier Collection Gentleman's Clip, also known as the Slim Barlow. One of my favorite patterns that I only have one of. And this one is, again, very, very plain. There are almost no markings in this one whatsoever. It plays with the light and is quite hard to see, but there isn't much depth to this one. It's just a very... Simple handle, which admittedly is pretty, but it lacks the um, the detail that you would want. Now this model, which is an Arthur Wright knife, another Sheffield company, is a lot cheaper than those two. This knife cost around, I believe, sub 30 pound, maybe 24, 25, from moonrakerknives.co.uk. And again, shipping was fast, fairly efficient, and I quite like Moonraker. Their customer service is on the slow side, but it is overall a fairly pleasant buying experience. I've had some issues in the past, but nothing too terrible. But this knife, made by Arthur Wright, is the Etric. And again, you have the swayback design, a very aggressive, very exaggerated swayback at that. And then you have the Warren Cliff which kind of goes the opposite ends. You really have one side curves down, the other one curves up, which is quite aesthetically pleasing, in my opinion. Nickel silver bolsters with a mirror polish, brass liners and a carbon spring, brass pins, C70 carbon steel Warncliffe blade with the Made in Sheffield tang stamp, the blade is very, very short, I should specify. This is a perfectly legal knife in the UK. I've done the measurement, well, quite a few times, but I'll do it again. Just for those who are particularly concerned. Blade length comes in at under two and a half inches with the unsharpened bit of the blade. Without, it's just at around a two inch cutting edge. The handle is significantly larger than the blade, which is typical of an Etric, and it almost comes in at four inches. So you're looking at an overall length of just over six inches. So it's a fairly decent knife in size, it's just that the blade is so short and the handle so long. Many have called this an unconventional shape and that it isn't something that appeals to them, but for me, I quite like it because no matter what size of hand you have, big or small, this will be very comfortable in both this grip 
and the opposite grip, which is very good for whittling and wood carving, which is what the Ettrick, but more specifically the Warrencliffe, has become famous for. Blade play is non-existent. Uh, blade is fairly off, unfortunately, in the closed position as well. It's not rubbing, but it is far from perfect. Cutoff of the spring is good. Gapping, eh, I'll hold it up to the light. There are some gaps up at the front. A little bit of light will shine through, you can see them there. Far from perfect, but not the worst I've seen. Pins are flush, they're not quite Friedrich Hartkopf levels of perfect, but they're definitely good. And again, that piece of buffalo horn. It's more detailed than this one, but not quite as nice as this one. Again, I'll see if the light can pick that up. There you go. You can see there are some silvery gray streaks in there. Very, very nice. And on the other side, not as much. On this piece, there is some detail right here. Don't know if the camera can pick this up, but you can see right around there, there is a nice pattern. On this side, there's a little bit here, but again, it's quite hard to pick up on the camera. I tried seeing if filters would help, but they didn't really. There, you can see very, very slight, but there are some gray streaks running along here. So definitely a handle for someone who really appreciates a Kind of an iridescent inky black color and i definitely do like this as it almost looks like an ebony or a very high polished um like some sort of resin handle or uh, synthetic and while i'm not a huge fan of synthetic i will admit that they do look quite nice when they're all shiny but there you are. There are three examples of buffalo handled knives. I still like this one the best for the detailing, but this one, while I don't really like the lack of detail in it, it's a very, very nice knife for carry that I would much rather have over this one. Let's check the edge here. This is a satin finished blade, by the way. I would kind of hoped it had been mirror polished due to the price of the handle. The grind is far from perfect, it's quite messy, but unlike many other A-Rite knives, this one actually came fairly sharp, and we'll demonstrate that for you with this poor piece of paper over here. It is far from a razor, I should specify, but compared to other Arthurite knives that come practically blunt, it is... it's... It's much better. It's still a little toothy, and you can definitely see that it kind of rips the paper more than cuts it cleanly, but the tip is very, very sharp and is quite helpful for, again, those draw cuts or intricate carvings into wood. Here, I'll line it up with some of the others for quality and style. These are bog oak. This is rosewood, and that is ebony. And you can even see that of all of these materials, the buffalo horn is by far the shiniest, with the ebony kind of being close. But the rosewood and the bog oak is a lot more matte in appearance. Quality-wise, I would probably closely compare it to the other Made in Sheffield Tang stamp knife here, the bog oak model and i've heard that these are more for tourists and they don't put as much fit and finish quality into them or they just take the lower quality ones and stamp them as made in sheffield um, again for the tourist market you can see the blades on both are much more off you can see again in the closed position 
This one's not terrible for gapping, but it has some gapping up here. Compared to the Rosewood model, this one is not as centered. No, definitely not. The Rosewood model also has a similar gapping, but the gaps aren't as long. The Ebony, the centering is almost perfect on that one. Eh, a little bit off, but still better. And gapping is better on the Ebony model too. And arguably my favorite, the other bog oak model, which admittedly does have a gap here. Much better centering wise. Both open and closed. And gapping is, again, a little bit better. Spring tension on this would be about six on this model, probably also a six, rosewood, five, ebony, five, and this one, about an eight. So definitely not the best finished one, but also not probably the worst. Um, it's not great, but I still like having it in the collection for the handle. Very nice style, I appreciate it overall. And really, aside from all the other things, the only other issue is the transition here is kind of messy. But overall, it's nice to have. That's the A. Wright and Son Buffalo Etric. And again, not perfect, but not bad. So thank you very much for watching. This has been the Arthur Wright Buffalo Etric, and this is the Knife Raven, as always, signing off. Goodbye.